in the market. Okay. So uh, next we have uh, Georgiana who says, uh, I'm working on expressing clearer what I do in defining my niche so far I've come up with. I help high achievers accomplish their goals without burning out. I don't like the term high achievers. I would also reword goals. Uh, but how can I describe the people I work with though it is not a personality type uh, that is not through a personality type or a profession? Boy, well, welcome to the trouble of niche, Rosanna. <laughs> I've been watching you for some time and I even got your ebook, The Art of Relevance, and I got a lot of that already. But yeah, I'm in the process of defining it. And I, I really don't like this term. Like even now when you were reading what I wrote, I kind of cringed. <laughs> hey. there, there's a few, It's this is hard. If, you know, everybody I know, uh, almost every entrepreneur struggles with this uh, deeply. Uh, but, you know, take heart. It does, it can come if you keep working at it. So one thing is you can say something like, I help high achievers such as that, that, that and give three specific examples of what you're talking about, because then it takes it from being an abstract term to, ah, I see what she's getting at, because what I mean by high achievers may be different than what you mean, but if you can give three types, because I mean, high achievers could mean athletes, could mean CEOs, could mean moms, could mean um, all sorts of things, and it probably means something different to everybody. So there's that. And then achieve their goals without burning out. Um, my guess is they've already burned out. And this is part of the problem. Yeah, they've already faced that. It's not going to be their first time. And that's exactly it, because it's not the first time. But then at some point, you start thinking, OK, right. this is happening repeatedly. I need to change something. And this is how my clients so far came to me, basically exhausted and burned out. Yeah. And so. I might reframe it from have it say something like I help high achievers such as da, 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 who are tired of burning out over and over again in their work or their career or their projects. Yeah, because I think that hones it a bit more. It's not just how to achieve the goals without burning out, but it's like they're, they're also tired of I'm in this cycle and I want out. And what strikes me too is there's there's for the island A, the issue it's often that people feel torn. So in this case, I get this sense that they're torn of, I want to still accomplish things, but I don't want to burn out. So I can either um, not accomplish things and not, not burn out. I can be sustainable, but I'm not accomplishing. I'll feel unfulfilled. Or I can accomplish things, but then I'm going to burn out. And they don't know how to balance those two. They don't know how to thread the needle between those two. So you can articulate that dilemma. You know, I work with people who, um, and you might define what you mean by high achiever. You, say, you know, somebody says, what do you do? You say, you know, there's some people who they're just so driven in life. Like they've got so much, they burn so hot. They've got so much they want to do in this life. They've got all these projects and all these ideas, um, but they keep burning out all the time. Oh yeah. Yeah. I help them figure out how to <clears throat> still achieve a lot but without without the burning out part. yeah and i would i would even say that like they don't have to choose between you know following their projects and burning out and being sustainable like that doesn't have to be a choice it can all melt in together somehow okay so and in a sentence or two how, how do you believe that's possible <laughs> Okay, so I could start, I just start speaking, so I see if I, something comes up, but like, if I say how I help high achievers that are this and that, that are tired of burning out, um, probably to understand that they don't have to choose between pursuing their projects and a sustainable way of living. I'm literally just using your words, but I, yeah, I'm going to have yeah. to. Let me let me hone the question. I'm asking you why you think that's possible. Because they feel like it's impossible. Yeah, they feel like it's impossible, but I know it is. Like this is are the results that I've seen in my coaching so far. What is the most important thing that they need to see or understand that is the proof that it's possible? Like what is the way that you do that? 
like by helping them understand that the <laughs> fuel or the place where they're operating from, it doesn't have to be limited. Okay. So I would just say that's the homework. I think actually the, the niche is sort of clearish, though mm -hmm. you, you could certainly hone, you could pick a certain type of industry, you could pick a certain type of um, community or crowd, but a couple of bits of homework. One, go to marketingforhippies.com slash puttering prep. And there's a bunch of um, exercises around niching. So that's P-U-T-T-E-R-I-N-G. So puttering and then prep, P-R-E-P. Yeah. Um, and dig into those exercises pretty heavily. But number two, I would also really, you might want to check out the point of view uh, workshops that I've got coming up. I've got a point of view lab next week. Um, but to start digging into the point of view, because if somebody comes to you and they say, and they're cynical, they say, look, I just keep burning out. That's just how life is. You know, you just work hard, you burn out, you work hard, you burn out. I've tried to balance. I've tried the meditation. None of it works. Like, what would you say to them? What do you think their blind spot is, right? What do you think the thing is that they're not seeing? What's the spell that they're under that keeps them trapped in this cycle? Yeah, that's the question to dig into so that you have that to answer because that can also affect the niche. That could also become part of the niche. So it becomes, I work with people who are uh, real. An another way to look at this is, why do you think they're burning out so much? You know, what do you think is going on underneath the surface that drives them so hard to the point of burnout? You know, what's really happening for them that makes their um, drive so unhealthy that it keeps delivering them to this point? So that can become the headline. Is like, you know, I work with people who are sick of burning out. They're, they're high achievers, but they're just, they're sick of burning out. And they're beginning to suspect that maybe their burnout is really about this so that could become part of the headline you know that becomes almost a part of the niche is that they they're beginning to have the dawning realization that oh maybe this is what's behind my problem that can be uh part of what hones the niche yes because the answer that i gave you was exactly like what i do or what happens in the coaching process but this happens after so in order for them to understand i think this is a great way to put it i would normally you know share a story of a client or so on but yeah i do right. want to have like clear expression yeah. of this right so we, have... right we just bring it further forward because sometimes this stuff we save it for later in the sales letter but it's actually good to bring it to the top um, and this is so much of the art of copywriting is what do you put at the top? There's lots to say, but what goes first? Um, and we want to make sure that what goes on top is that initial thing that would have our ideal client say, yes, that's me, and would eliminate anyone who's not a, not a fit. And again, we also want to aim for the bullseye. Sometimes we're scared of losing people, so we, we'd be a, we're a little more general. But I would just aim at exactly who you most, most, most want to work with, the ones you're best at helping aim at them you'll still get other people but i would aim at those ones okay. yeah i love this thank you so much you're welcome to return good to see you